You guys up for a little story? I had a little concise queen introduction video planned for you. I had everything shot, edited. I was coming up here to get the last shot of the queen in the hive with the fresh eggs. End of story. And then everything went off the rails. And this video has turned into now a four queen epic drama that spans two months. And we're not talking about Frankie, the old 2018 drama hive, which looking back seems kind of quaint. We're talking about Una, which is 2020 level drama. All right, from the top, let's go back to June 4th. Regular inspection, open up Una, found a clear indication of swarming. There was eight or 10 swarm cells in the hive. The hive was packed. There was a lot of resources in here. Found the queen before she swarmed. Thought, okay, I can make a resource hive out of Una. Bring her over to a resource hive with some frames of brood. Let them keep going over there. Let her keep laying in the resource hive. Let this hive with all of their huge population and resources make a new queen from those swarm cells. So they'll just think the, hive, the queen swarmed away and they will make their queen as they were already in the process. Made a video about that, linked up here. When I was bringing the queen over to the resource hive, she jumped off the frame, disappeared. So, Una, gone. But, we still have this hive. Population is here. We basically lost one queen, one bee, but the rest of the hive was still here. They were still foraging, there were still brood emerging, swarm cells in there. So, hey, what do you do? You leave them alone for three weeks or so, let the queens hatch out, deal with who's gonna be the queen. She goes out and mate, you check the hive in about three weeks and look for eggs. Easy. So knowing how the queens work, knowing the bee math, those, bee, those queens could be emerging any day, but at the very worst case scenario, they have eggs in the hive, they can make a new queen if they need to, and the very latest she would have emerged would have been June 20th. So even if those swarm cells failed and they made a new queen from an egg that was left in the hive, and she emerged on the 20th of June, or around the 20th of June. There was a whole week left in there of buffer time. She would have gone out to mate the first week of July. Unfortunately, the first four days of July, we had a ton of rain. So any queens that were out mating, or probably wouldn't have gone out mating because it was raining every day, and probably the coordination with the drones and all that probably didn't work out those four days. But anyway, hoping that she would have gotten out the week before to mate. So I come back on July 5th, which is a full month after I left this hive with swarm cells and eggs and brood and a huge population. Four weeks have passed. So I'm coming in here looking for a queen right hive. I want to find evidence of a queen. I want to find eggs, hopefully brood, hopefully everything's cool. I found no eggs, no brood, no queen, nothing. And my first instinct was, well, fail. Let's just drop another frame of eggs in there. I've got time to kill here. They'll, they'll get another shot. This is a strong hive still. They just need some eggs to make a new queen. Took a frame of eggs from Oddball, dropped it in the hive. Thought, I'll just leave them alone. If for some reason there was a queen in there, they would just ignore the eggs. They wouldn't make queens out of them. They would just treat them as brood, cap them off, make new bees. If they did need eggs to make a queen, I gave them a really nice frame of eggs. So, eggs in the hive. And I think, one more week, I'm just going to give them a week. That's usually the answer with beekeeping is just give them a week. Come back and check in a week. So one week later, I come back in here, and I think the eggs that I put in here are probably going to have queen cells on them because this is a queenless hive. So I'm looking for queen cells, and while I'm looking for queen cells, I find a queen. There's a queen in the hive. Hooray! So unfortunately, I didn't find any eggs in the hive. There was a queen, she looked healthy, she looked nice and fat, everything looked cool, but there were no eggs. I didn't see any eggs anywhere, and I looked at every frame a few times. What I did find was drone brood everywhere. So that means that we have either a laying worker situation or a drone laying queen, because there's drones throughout the hive. They're just kind of like shotgun pattern just all over the place. I ruled out the laying worker because I didn't notice like eggs all over the place where they were like multiple eggs in a cell and and things you notice with a, with a laying worker this was just drone brood 
shotgun pattern throughout the hive and, and a lot of it, like just everywhere you look. So I'm thinking drone laying queen, which is actually an easy fix. So I wrapped everything up and that day I actually went over and that was the day that I got my new queens from Autumn Morning Farm. Came back here with a nice buck fast queen. The next day, came up to the hive, I'm gonna deal with a drone laying queen. How do you deal with a drone laying queen? Well, you have to get rid of all the drone brood in the hive and you have to get rid of the queen because she's the problem in the hive and then you introduce a new queen. Pretty simple, pretty basic. And that's what I did. Drone brood. No, there's no brood, and the only brood that is there is drone brood. So this is, oh, there she is right there. All right, queen, you are coming out. So there's our queen. So this queen right here is, she's only laying drones. She's had weeks to mate and she hasn't done it. So she probably thinks she's mated and she's just laying eggs, uh, but the eggs are drones. So I can't put her in another hive. I can't just let her go. She's gonna die either way. So it's, this, is, this, is her, this is her time right here. So, sorry queen. I was queenless. So I know it sucks to intentionally kill a queen and I didn't like doing it, I don't like doing it, but I did it to save the colony, to save the thousands of other bees in here. So when you have a drone laying queen, you have a, a future dead colony because she's going to be laying only drones, which means it's only males in the hive, which means there are no foragers in the hive. And within a month or two, the hive will basically just die. It'll just be all males in here with no foragers, the males will eat all the resources and then the colony's gone. So this was a dead hive. And to save it, I needed to kill the queen, get her out of there, introduce a new laying queen. So that night I put the queen in the cage into the hive just so they could kind of get to know her a little bit, smell her, get the pheromones start to spread around the hive. The, the cork was still over the candy so they couldn't have gotten her out. I just put her in there so they could get used to her. The next day I came up and I made sure they were not being aggressive, they were not balling up, they were totally chill. So I opened up the cork on the candy, put the queen in with the candy plug exposed so they could eat the candy and get the queen out. So four days later, I expect to come up here and find a buckfast queen in the hive, out of her cage, laying eggs with uh, potentially larvae in, in the cells and, you know, just basically a, a nice queen right hive. End of story, end of video. So I did find the Buckfast Queen. She was running around, everything looked great. She looked nice and healthy, she had a following, she was out of her cage, the hive was, was packed, everything was good. And then I found 14 capped queen cells. Holy cow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So why are there 14 capped queen cells in the hive. Where did these queen cells come from? So my first thought was that the bees had been trying to make an emergency queen because there was a drone laying queen in there. So if you do the bee math, those capped queen cells were nine days old at the youngest. So if you go back nine days, the buckfast queen wasn't even in the hive yet. So those couldn't have been from the buckfast queen. It had to have been from the queen that I killed. So I don't know if she was laying only drones or if she was like poorly mated and laying like a fertilized egg here and there and then mostly drones and the drones were capped and there were a few fertilized eggs in the hive and they just made queen cells out of them or they made a queen cell out of a drone egg. I don't know if they can do that, but either way, I think that that queen was definitely damaged in some way and she was not gonna be a good queen. So I don't feel bad having killed that queen, but the Buckfast queen, is the mystery because she's running around and I still don't see any other eggs in the hive or any other brood, just queen cells. So the bees are making queen cells for a reason. So I had a choice. My first thought was, well, I'll just take the buckfast queen out, make a new hive with her. 
let them make the queen they want to make with those queen cells. But then I thought, what if those are drone eggs in there? What if those are crappy emergency queens that aren't going to be good? And I've got a really good buckfast queen in there. So I decided to remove the queen cells. I know I could have kept the queen cells, but this hive hadn't made successful queens from a queen cell yet in the past two months. So going by the odds here, we've got a queen in there. She just came out of a cage. She's definitely mated. She's buckfast, which I wanted to keep. I destroyed all of the queen cells in here and just left the buckfast queen. So that was on July 18th. So all the queen cells removed. I left the buckfast queen in here with fresh frames to lay into, lots of resources, a nice big population. And to entice her a little bit more, I took a frame of emerging brood out of the oddball hive to put in here. Because I was told that emerging brood might inspire her to start laying eggs. Because there's pheromone, there's young nurse bees emerging from the brood that can take care of new eggs. So I put a frame of emerging brood. I made sure there were no queen cells. There's no queen on there. It was an empty frame of just emerging brood into this hive just to inspire the queen to lay. Close them all up on July 18th. Buckfast queen out of her cage, emerging brood, big population, leave them alone. So three days go by and I'm in the bee yard and I'm looking at Una and I'm thinking, I'm just gonna have a peek. I just want to see if there's some eggs in there. She's had three days, that emerging brood, there's probably nurse bees coming out. We've had good weather. I'm feeling good. I'm just going to have a peek, see if I see some new eggs, and, and just have a look at our new Buckfast Queen. So my eyes are zeroed in on the cells. I'm looking for eggs. I'm looking for brood. I'm looking for larvae. I'm looking for the Buckfast Queen. And what runs across the frame in front of my eyes? We have another queen in the hive. Unless that's the... Uh oh, man. There's a queen right there. Another queen. A different queen. And the Buckfast queen was gone. She, she was gone. The, the, you know, this is not the same queen. Look at the side-by-side -side pictures. This is a different queen. This is not the Buckfast queen with the paint rubbed off or anything. Buckfast queen was gone. I don't know what happened to her. She could have flown off. They could have killed her. This new bee somehow arrived or emerged and killed her. I'm, I don't know what happened to Buckfast, but this new queen, like, how... I There were no queen cells in there. I removed all the queen cells. The, there weren't any... They couldn't have made a queen in that time. I'd been in this hive three days prior. There were no other queen cells in there. I didn't put any queen cells in on that frame of emerging brood that I put in there. There was no queen cells on there. So I'm thinking... How could this queen have gotten in the hive? There's no way they could have superseded her in that time. There were no queen cells in here. The only thing I can think of is she flew in. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm making walkaway splits throughout this bee yard. There's a lot of hives that were in the process of making queens over the last few weeks. I think a, a bee had flown out of one of my hives to mate came back and came into the wrong hive. Sounds weird, but this has happened before. A couple years ago, it happened. And ironically, it happened with this hive. This hive. The original Una hive. The very first split that I made and put in this position that eventually became Una. The first bee that came out of here as a walkaway split flew out of this on a mating flight and went over there to the other hive, and I noticed a new queen in that hive that had not been in there. So this, this hive, <laughs> that's happened before. So I think that's what happened. I think another bee flew in from a mating flight and came here. Now, I don't know if she killed the Buckfast queen. I don't know if the she came in and the bees thought, hmm, Buckfast, new queen, uh, Buckfast, get out of here. Whatever happened, happened. There was another queen in this hive, and I think she was from one of my hives, and I think that's what happened. So get this. So if you remember, back on July 5th, earlier in this video, I said that I took a frame of eggs from this hive, put it into the Una hive so they could have a second shot at making a queen. On that same day, on July 5th, I took a frame of eggs from the oddball hive, which was booming and had lots of eggs. Frame of eggs from here, 
put it over there to make a resource hive right there. Right over there. One row ahead, right there. See where I'm going here? How many days passed from the day I put the eggs in until I saw another queen in this hive? 17 days. 17 days. How long does a queen take to, be, to emerge from a cell after the, the bees start making a queen? 16 days. So, it is quite possible that the frame of eggs I took out of here and put over there to make a resource hive created a queen from one of those eggs. That queen flew out on a mating flight and came back and instead of landing right there, missed her mark by six feet in the exact same orientation and flew in here. So the kicker here is on that day, July 21st, when I found that queen in this hive, I went over there and looked in that hive, found a bunch of emerged cells and no queen. There's no queen in there. There's emerged cells, but there's no queen in that hive. There's a, a new queen in this hive. So that's what I think happened. And in addition to finding that fourth queen in this hive, which I think came from right there, the Buckfast queen was missing. I did find a frame of fresh eggs in this hive. So something is laying in this hive. I don't know if it's that queen. Odds are it's probably not that queen. It's probably the Buckfast queen had started laying and then something happened to her. There's now another queen in here and there are fresh eggs in here. So I'm gonna leave this hive alone right now because there are eggs in here and there's a queen in here. And if that queen is not mated and she goes out and mates, hopefully she's gonna come back, find her way to this hive. If she goes to another hive, I don't know what's gonna happen, but there are eggs in here. So the bees will know what to do. And I'm not gonna mess with them anymore. I don't even feel like I've messed with them that much. All this has happened and every step of the way I look back and I don't think I made bad decisions at all with this hive. I think I was deciding to do things as they occurred. I fixed problems. I dealt with situations. There were a lot of weird factors with this hive. A lot of things happened, but I don't think I made any rash decisions. I don't think I made any wrong decisions. And in the end, people say, oh, just let nature take its course. Let's let the hive do what it wants. If I just let the hive do what it wants, we would have had a swarm back on June 4th. And those queen cells that were in here, um, that I left in here, that remained in here the whole time, which I didn't touch, failed to produce a queen. So if I had just let nature take its course from day one, we would have had a swarm and swarm cells in here that did not produce a functional queen, produced a drone laying queen. If I'd come back in here and seen that drone laying queen let nature take its course, this hive would have died. By removing the drone laying queen, adding the buckfast queen, that was a good decision. We put a, a, a new laying queen in the hive. We saved the colony. That queen flying in here was a wild card situation. You, you can't plan for that. that. That doesn't happen. I mean, it doesn't happen except for two times in two years in this bee yard in, in this exact location. But I mean, generally it doesn't happen. You can't count on it is what I'm saying. So now, after all that, I'm going to just let nature take its course. And that is, that is the end of the story. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let, let this hive be for a few weeks and I'm gonna go in there and see what's going on. And I will promise to report back. But that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Happy beekeeping.